Hey folks, I'm Tim. Welcome to DIY Farm. Today we're going to get a bit green fingered with the mini digger and get some trees planted. Stick around and I'll show you what we're going to get up to. I'm going to be planting some trees, but they are. They're quite big ones. Let's make a start, because I think we've got some digging ahead of us. So we weren't really planning on doing much tree planting until next autumn. We've got about 40 smaller trees to plant as part of our stewardship scheme. However, these came up at a sale recently, and because it's kind of end of season for root balls and bare root type planting, they were a bit of a steal. So I couldn't resist. Uh, we've got some hornbeam, we've got an oak, and we've got some uh, field maple. I think, the best bet is going to be to pick the ones we want, take them over there, possibly balance them in the bucket. Right, first attempt, we're going to go with the tractor and the bucket. I think we can wiggle them on there. I said they wouldn't stay up, but bizarrely, we seem to be doing all right. Well, it worked. So uh, let's do some more. I realised that the two, first two I took are actually the smaller ones. Some of these are a bit bigger, uh, and the ones I want to get in first are the big ones. Right, I think this is the one we want and we're going to start, let's just get one in the ground rather than getting them all out and then blow over and stuff. So this is a hornbeam and it is what's known as the 12 to 14, which is the girth, I think, of the, of the trunk. So 12 to 14 centimetres and it's probably five metres tall. Don't know if that's with the root ball. They were hanging off the back of that trailer and that's four and a half metres. So we're... Um, we're pretty close to being as big as I could have transported myself. Now Joe and I have worked out where we want the first one. Looking out from inside, it seems like this post here is a good datum to go off. I was a little bit too deep on the last one. I think that's about right. I'm gonna get a sling on this one because this one's a lot heavier. These are heavy and I'm pointing downhill. So I'm putting a lot of trust in that front blade of the digger. I don't think it was sinking, he says.
I've left it a little bit lower, uh, just like I did on the other side. I'll backfill it, I'll melt it with some compost, and it just means that if it's a little bit lower, I can pour water in here, and it won't just dribble straight off the hillside. So it'll well and then soak in slowly. Well, last minute decision before the fence goes in tomorrow. I'm going to get the last tree planted. This big horn beam will go in the end and it'll be sandwiched by the fence tomorrow. Now the last thing I want to do is give you a bit of a spoiler and show you all my new fencing because that is finally in, which means our trees are safe. You can see that I got Tom to put in some old posts that I pulled out just as a tree support. Uh, I need to put a board across and we'll get them strapped to it. I don't want to over support them because one of the most important things is letting the tree do the work and if it blows around in the wind then the roots kind of compensate for that and they can, hopefully, they're going to um, produce a stronger tree. So we have got all of our trees in now, including that one right at the end, which I planted just the night before this fence went in, because as soon as the fence goes in, I wouldn't have been able to do it with a mini digger, and that's a lot of digging and lifting. But one of the most uh, difficult parts of it was not necessarily digging a hole, because the root balls aren't ginormous, they're quite big, but you know, I can dig a hole with a spade. It's more to do with the fact that they are so heavy, and lifting one of those in place would have been a bit more tricky. Um, I managed to get it moved around with a sack truck, that worked quite well, but I would suggest 
if you can, if you're planting anything this size, get a mini digger and just get it on a sling and lift it in. The other benefit of all this fencing being in now is it is safe from the goats. And I mean, they've been eyeing it up. They've, uh, they've been looking over like it's a sweetie shop. And I think this horn beam, they might have given a bit of a manicure too, but it's safe, it's safe now. The biggest problem I've had is water. These trees have been in for a total of two weeks, I think, and it has been hot. It hasn't rained in over three weeks uh, or nothing, substantial amount of rain anyway. And my hose only reaches to the third one. So the bottom two have suffered and bucketing water down here. It's just amazing how much water these trees need. So I am a bit concerned about this one. It's a little bit shriveled. But there's still new growth coming through, so I'm hoping that I can make a bit more of a well here and bring down my kind of, I don't know what we call this, but it's a water butt on a, on a wheel. And anyway, it works really well. Dump a full one of those on it and just let it soak in overnight. Of course, I will cover this in the fencing episode, but we need to rail off or wire off the end of this one. This would probably just be rails because the new gate is going to be set on a gate post here, uh, which will mean that all of our hedgerow, which is going to be a, an autumn project, the whole of this hedgerow will then become stock proof and like a nice little wildlife corridor. So these trees will be kind of absorbed by the hedge, the idea being that you have the hedge and then you have some nice lollipops sticking out the top of it in a few years time. It's just amazing when you can get something that's a little bit more established in the ground and you get instant satisfaction. So I'm really hoping that these will take off here. I've got the little oak tree right up in the top of the field, which I will never see the shade of, but that's all what you know, future planning is all about, planting for the future. Uh, so there'll be a nice oak tree up there. And then of course, we've got endless smaller trees that are gonna be planted within existing hedgerows. And the idea being there is we'll be using sort of two meter, quite small trees but time will allow those to kind of grow up beyond the hedge and we'll have a mixture of hedge and trees all the way around all these fields let's get these goats some water i need water 